it's become something of a running joke in the industry that Naughty Dog keeps remastering and re-releasing their games, even when they're barely a few years old. Just in 2023, two of the biggest games were big budget remakes. The Resident Evil remake revived the 2005 original, and the Dead Space remake brought back the 2008 title. But The Last of Us Part Two on PS5, particularly feels like a tiresome business move to make more money for Sony. And they did release a trailer for the new uh, remastered edition of The Last of Us Part Two. So let's go ahead and take a look. Because of her, they were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. Sweet Jesus. Doctor? What are you doing in here? You would kill her. And this is a great discussion in the gaming community because it feels pretty split right now. So let me go ahead and uh, showcase you guys the comments that have been circulating all across the globe. First comment was, this is a W. Upgrade for $10 and you get the new content. But just to clarify, if you had the PS4 edition and you want to upgrade to the new remastered PS5, you just pay $10 and you will get some of those previous lost or, or lost levels, which baffles me why they even removed it from the game in the first place. Um, and I guess you have different skins that you could choose from and etc. So there's one person that's really vibing with it. But then you get someone that's like, we will not be buying this unless it comes with the Bloodborne remastered. <laughs> exactly. Where's the Bloodborne remastered? They've been, you know saying that uh this game's never going to come back basically but everyone wants it to come back it's like they completely ignore it <laughs> it feels more justifiable because it came out in the ps3 <laughs> so you know again this is a game that came out like three or four years ago so let's move on with the comments because the next person said no one asked for this previous cut lost levels exactly that's kind of what i was thinking i'm like what more are they going to add to the story beyond what we already know? No, it doesn't need a remastered because the base game runs at 1440 pixels, 60 frames per second on the PS5. With that said, I'm getting it 100% and getting the platinum. I think the frustration comes from ND has no new games for PS5 and now three remasters in the first three plus years of the PS5. Excellent point. And then IGN, they did a poll. They had over 2,100 voters, and it's about a 60 40 ratio. You know, no, it's just fine as it is on the PS5. So that's why it's become this kind of running joke. And as you just expressed right now, you're going, there are like other games we can focus on. Do people not, or do they not realize that like Bloodborne, for example, a fan favorite might not necessarily be for me, but it doesn't even have a PC port yet. Like that's kind of exactly. crazy. Exactly. That's why when we did Lies of P for pause and repeat, I was like, this is like Bloodborne, but for PC because yeah. so many people want it. There's so many games, not even just Bloodborne, but just games in general that people would like to have updated for the newer consoles because, you know, maybe you don't have access to an older console anymore and you want to play that game. And they're very willing to do remasters. Clearly there's been plenty this year already but for some reason, they, you know, they're just not doing certain games. And instead, we have things like this, where a game that comes out less than four years ago gets a remaster. Yeah. No, it sounds totally insane because you think about, like, in my experience, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I never grew up playing Final Fantasy. It just wasn't in my wheelhouse. Never had any kind of consideration or even thought to even try to pick up the game. But I want to be a part of the culture. I want to see why it's become such a fan favorite for even the older generations and even people like myself. And this is why I want to showcase the side-by-side -side comparison of the Final Fantasy VII, which was first released in 1997. And this is why Final Fantasy VII Remake feels way more justifiable than getting another. Like, this is the second uh, edition of a remaster for The Last of Us Part Two. 
let me uh, make my case. Let's go ahead and showcase the video. Get down here, Merc. Part of the game being justified is that it's a fan favorite and it's never been touched since the original. But at the same time, like you can't look at that footage and say, OK, yeah, they actually did something. Yeah, it, it, it well, it, it's a completely different gaming experience. I know even in that video, it was more showcasing some of the more cinematic elements, but when you play Final Fantasy VII back in the day, it was more of like uh, the new Super Mario RPG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more yeah, of that turn-based turn combat. Game. Exactly. And then you go and play Final Fantasy VII Remake, you, you feel like you're playing like Devil May Cry Five. You're like, this yeah. is so badass. This is a totally new re-immersive experience that I didn't even think would even be possible with this game. And that's why it's being celebrated. And it's kind of its own franchise in and of a lot of itself. I know even starting in the uh, the new year, uh, um, I think around February, uh, they're doing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or something like that. Continuing cloud story. So yep. I mean, it's just insane like that there's right ways to approach remakes and remasters compared to what I will dub as re-releasing <laughs> when it comes to The Last of Us. And I don't know if you remember, Henrik, you know, The Last of Us, the very first game, had its own DLC left behind. I had mm -hmm. a lot of fun with it. It's a fast burner. You can burn through it, but it continues on the story like the prequel to Ella's uh, life that got later explored in the HBO series. Yeah. Why did they not feel like they could have just done a DLC with this? You know, with the with the previous lost levels, we'll probably never know. Uh, most likely, those lost levels were just like a director's vision, and then someone came in and said, "This game's too long, cut." And now yeah. they're putting they're putting it back in. And you know, I can at least praise them for not charging the full price for an upgrade to the new version. You know, at least it's only ten dollars. But there's some games out there that do the upgrade for free. But some people are kind of calling out Naughty Dog because um, the game, again, it's been out for like four years or about to be approaching Black Friday. Um, the game doesn't, uh, well, the, at least the new remaster doesn't drop until uh, January. I believe it was 17th. And so that's why people kind of feel like it's like, dude, what if I didn't already have, you know, the PS4 edition? I, you expect me to pay for a game that's been out for four years at the same fixed price of $70? That's the issue that gamers have and feel like the game should at least come out to 50 bucks. That's why it goes back to this old Strauss Zelnick ordeal <laughs> with the GTA publishers. They're like, guys, what don't you understand? Not everybody is willing to fork out $70 for your work, even though we understand that the value matches the entertainment. It's just not, yeah, not, not every game needs to be priced at 70. Not every game is going to be worth $70. You know, a lot of people are probably going to wait until this go, goes on sale before they actually buy it. And maybe those companies should look at the metrics and see who buys the game when it comes out and who buys it when it's on sale and see, hey, we got, we got a lot more sales than this game was on sale. So maybe we shouldn't, you know, launch it at a full price uh, next time we do a game. Maybe we should consider maybe launching it for less because people would be more inclined to buy it. Right. And I'm wondering if they're actually going to get the success that they're hoping for, because, you know, Last of Us Part Two has been very controversial with gamers. You know, some people really despise the game, while others will uh, still continue to play it on a rerun like myself. I really love the gaming element. I think it's really, really fun. I didn't really have too much of an issue uh, with the storyline, per se. All I know is, is that the game can't end the way that it ended. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why people are despising like that's it. You really guys are not going to consider a part three. That's why I can get the I can understand the frustration. So we'll see. And then, you know, when you think about the previous uh, lost levels, I'm kind of wondering, knowing that, you know, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey are about to get ready because the strikes are over. 
to start shooting season two of the last of us. And I'm, <laughs> my thought keeps fluttering, whether there's a reason why they're bringing back the lost levels, because some of those elements might actually help the TV series tell the story mm. a little bit better and then branch out part two into three seasons, which has been kind of being fluttered around on uh cinematic outlets like variety or Vox, for example. That's a good point. Yeah. They might actually have a chance to tell those stories in the TV series. And in that case, like if you are going to do that in the game, in the TV series, you might as well put them in the game. Right. So people can because- play them. Because then you're going to get gamers that are going to be like, why did you why did you add that? That was never in the game. And then they're going to be like, no, no, no. That was always our original thought. And yeah. you won't know that unless you buy a remastered $70, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I don't know about you gamers. We definitely want to know your thoughts. Join the conversation. Your voice needs to be heard.